Hello, uh, my name is Daniel Oliveira, and it is a privilege to share our experience at the Centro Qualifica with you. Today, we will speak about how the validation of prior learning takes place at the City Hall of Lisboa under the umbrella of a national policy that was first named New Opportunities. In Portugal, the validation of prior learning translates into process of recognition, validation and certification of competences or process as we call it. And it is anchored in on a national policy which since 2002 has had a big impact at national level, but which has also withstood quite a zigzag in political decision making. This presentation will focus on the validation of prior learning considering school qualifications, although there are also charters that validate prior learning in various professional fields. There are two reference charters that are most important for this presentation. One considering basic school qualifications, fourth grade, sixth grade and ninth grade of school qualifications and one considering secondary school qualifications matching a 12th grade school certificate. But what is a Centro Qualifica? Well, we are pa part of a, uh, we're a cell of a wider uh, lifelong learning ecosystem and work together with public and both private partners. We work with wet centers, parishes, but also the private sector and the university. Our aim is to try to foster a clear chance to include all those that live, work or study in Lisbon, raising awareness for the right for training, education and development as a citizenship or a worker's right. Our offer is carried out during working hours, contradicting the market where most offers are restricted to evening classes. The Qualifica team has been working since 2002 with thousands of participants. We started with a focus on the more than 10,000 city workers, but opened our scope to local community very quickly. Since 2015, more than 1,700 people have accessed our services, from which more than 600 have enrolled in the process. Since 2015, we have certified the competences of 151 participants. So we could say that the success rate is about 25%. Lisbon Qualifica Center is open to everyone. One of the main aspects we believe are most relevant for participants is the assignment of an advisor that accompanies the candidate throughout the entire process. The advisor acts as a mediator between the candidate and the validation process team. Last year, 91 part participants enrolled in the process of validation of prior learning. This, re this year, we have already boarded 42 participants onto the process. Our next jury session takes place next Monday when two participants will face the jury with their final presentation Another important aspect would be the focus of our methodology on valuing each candidate's heritage. Trigger questions, life story and workshop sessions, and finally the competences portfolio are all orientated towards mapping heritage and lifelong experiences and learning from self-empowerment and enrichment. Let me share our methodology with you. The backbone of the methodology at the Qualifica Center is based on Paulo Freire's problematizing pedagogy and Marie-Christine Jossot's Histoire de Vie, including also David Cope's experiential learning theory. We believe that there is an imminent and priceless heritage to explore in each participant. In order to create a learning environment, Paulo Freire, David Kolb and Marie-Christine Jossot have become key to the methodology that challenges the participant to safely explore several dimensions of their life. 
through critical thinking and confidence building collaboration, the participant exposes his personal interests, his supportive relationships and diverse learning opportunities that take place in his professional life, but also regarding personal and family life and social life. So learning becomes a critical understanding of the world and the acknowledgement of the importance of all the life choices and experiences arise in the participant. We question ourselves continuously in order to prevent the methodology from crystallizing. A great part of the team has gone back to university with a special focus on non-formal education working with leading researchers from the academia, empowering the Qualifica team, especially towards de-schooling our approach. In 2013, a human rights education program was introduced in this, at the City Hall of Lisbon, once more benefiting the Centro Qualifica with another non-formal education toolbox and a different learning environment, working with NGOs and sharing experiences with other facilitators and educators was paramount for once again de-schooling our methodology. We believe in the validation of prior learning. We have a clear mission towards empowerment and two decades of experience. So we feel we also have the responsibility to contribute to the advancement of EPL and to benefit from the knowledge the academia provides. University students and researchers have been a regular presence at our center broadening the possibility to share experiences and views and enhancing the team's opportunity to continuously question the approach and the process with new inputs and fresh eyes. Also, participants of our groups have provided portfolios and worked with researchers in what constitutes a very rich experience and a recognition for the participants by itself. But what does the process look like? The validation of prior learning in the framework of the process takes, based, takes place based on the portfolio and the life story that is produced by each participant. So this is a three-party endeavor. First, the participant recognizes his skills. Then the team of facilitators validates them. And the final jury certificates the competences which are presented in the form of a portfolio. Of course, speaking of a portfolio, narrative skills as reading and writing are key factors. Building the portfolio is a highly complex and also a very creative endeavor. Although the portfolio is an, in, an, is an individual outcome, it is fostered in a group by discussions by sharing life experiences and by interpreting the charters to which the portfolio is in the end compared to in a final jury. So we start together in what is in fact a supported individual endeavor. The group is key. The group is key for fostering a sense of community, of group building, it is the primary task for the team of facilitators. We are very thorough about creating a safe and confidence building environment for the participants. The process is currently composed of 45 or 90 hours of group workshop sessions and as many hours as necessary of individual guidance. Each group brings together participants with very different backgrounds crossing different ages and even generations, and of course, professional backgrounds. Since the pandemic, we have taken the process online, which was a huge challenge as we had to transfer the safe and confidence building environment from the training room to the cold screen. This was a huge challenge for the team since all the methodology had been crafted for almost 20 years 
in a face-to-face -face scenario. But powered by a bunch of tools and with a lot of optimism, the team entered this new reality. Building a safe learning environment is essential to invite participants to share experiences to which other participants can then co-relate. Writing a life history and building a portfolio is a profoundly solitary work and therefore filled of individual choices that should reflect the candidate's strength as well as the empowering opportunities that each participant identifies for his or her future. Because the process is also a trapdoor for the emergence of new skills, most easily identifiable in computer skills and language literacy, but also in math, especially in language literacy, of course, both in written as well as in the capacity of of participating in speaking out as the process is based on a highly participatory involvement of each participant. The group is also essential for decoding the competence charter, uh, charters, which are highly conceptual and therefore difficult to blend onto the life itinerary of a participant. Discussing the charters with individual inputs from each participant translates into offering shape to a flat language. All this is key to a narrative process. And so our methodology is embedded with 15 trigger questions. Before we, uh, we, we talk about the uh, 15 trigger questions, uh, let me say that our offer is now uh, provided in two different forms, one face-to-face -face and one completely online. The in-person process is currently composed of 90 hours of group workshop sessions with up to 16 participants plus individual guidance. And since the pandemic, we have created an e-line, uh, an e-learning offer where groups have a maximum number of 10 participants. The online offer is based on 45 hours of group workshops with up to 10 participants, plus 15 to 30 hours of autonomous training and as many hours as necessary of individual guidance. Some sessions in person or online can be co-facilitated by two or three trainers. Let me give you a brief look into the structure. The workshop sessions are based on, on the 15 trigger questions and these trigger questions can be grouped. So we are in the beginning of our pathway and the first trigger questions focus on the motivation and goals that each participant brings into the room or onto the screen. It is also in this first block that the self-evaluation has to be fulfilled, underlining from the start the importance of critical thinking throughout the whole process. While being familiarized with being back to school, which isn't school-like at all, it is important to approach the structure, namely the group, the reference charter, questions like how does this work, who is involved, who recognizes, who validates, how does the certification work, what is the jury? These are the first questions which are attended. A second block of, of sessions is focused on how are competences related to knowledge? How is learning related to experience? The participant becomes more and more involved in reflecting on the importance of his or her experiences and competences. And so the process becomes a mechanism of metacognition. How does my individualism express itself? What is my relation to others like? It becomes clearer for the participant how important informal and non-formal learning opportunities have been throughout their lives their professional life, but
but also their personal life, their family life, and even their social life. In the third block, the participant is challenged by two questions that focus on developing strategies and mechanisms so that proof of lifelong learning as knowledge, expertise, and know-how are integrated into the portfolio in order to stay on track. The objective is to build a portfolio that reflects the charter, not to write a novel. After having worked on the concept of what is a competence and discussing resources, strategies of how to implement them in a portfolio, it is key to focus on the reference charter. So let's take a closer look at the forms of proof in the portfolio itself. This is one of the major questions that participants bring to the table. The life history is the centerpiece. The Histoire de Vie is most certainly the longest and most complex text most participants have ever written. A document that easily encompasses more than 100 pages of sharing experiences in the form of text. It encompasses both private, the family life, as well as the professional experiences the participant wishes freely to write about, as well as his social life and citizenship, and also including his, his worldview and the capacity to, to express a fact-based opinion on diverse matters, diverse matters that are, of course, included in the charters. To maintain a chronology becomes harder and harder, as the mentioned spheres, private life and professional life easily collide. Challenges arise. Working with a team of facilitators in a constant dialogue becomes key to success. Writing becomes rewriting. So we use a variety of mapping tools in which the participant closes the conceptual gap between the charter and his or her life experience. Most often these tools will not be compulsory. Instead, they are freely used or, or even adapted by the participants. Some examples of these tools are the map of competences that is built for each key area, but also the itinerary of my life, as well as different diaries and logbooks that the team has built. The portfolio can be physical or entirely digital. It encompasses various forms of proof that I can consider that are adequate to exhibit the competences I'm looking to validate, like of course certificates, but also any other documental forms like emails I've written in my private, social or professional sphere. I can reuse documents which are part of my of my lifelong archive. I can use I can of course use video as a form of, of demonstration as well as podcasts or any other digital media that each participant builds. As the participant becomes familiar with the key competence charter, it is now time to, as Josso has put it, to walk towards himself using the charter as a lens through which one analyzes his life experience, his experiential heritage. As, look, as looking to one's experience can hardly be disconnected from one's future plans, we believe that the construction of a competence portfolio incites towards the definition of emerging future goals. So what will tomorrow bring? These questions are related to future goals that can be connected towards school qualifications and new professional goals, but can also have an effect of opening a new path to other personal or social goals. What are the steps that I need to take towards each one of these goals that, I, that I'm setting up for myself? In the last stage, the participant checks and balances his portfolio against the key competence charter, considering all the stated objectives 
and finishing his self-assessment, stating to what degree he or she has proved the necessary evidence. Once again, the process of metacognition is activated and the participant is once again invited to walk towards himself, understanding not only how important life experience has, has become to who we are, but also to face fu the future itinerary and where to invest to in the future. The process culminates with a public jury presentation where the competences that were recognized by the participant, validated by the team of facilitators, are finally certified by an independent jury. So these 15 trigger questions, they are interdependent. Questions of often overlap. One question may fuel some uncertainty, but will also build up new curiosity. The questions are nuclear. They are at the core of the process and they guide towards the goal. As said before, the goal is to demonstrate show competences which are included in a, in a narrative, not to write a personal novel. Questions have to be flexible. The participant has freedom to explore. Volunteer, voluntary participation is mandatory. We have to give space. Questions are also customizable. They are open and thought provoking. There is no wrong answers. We are provoking the possibility of choice and offering thereby autonomy. And questions have to be empowering. Questions are purposefully set in a progressive order to help the participants because the process is a marathon. In a time where information is more and more fragmented, it is a huge challenge that each participant takes upon himself or herself. So we come to the future. Or how does the empowerment of the process express itself? Well, a career change was one of the most stated initial expectations and many participants applied shortly after the jury sessions to new job offers. Many pursued a career progress. Others started surfing. And this picture, which was taken in the noble room of the city hall, uh, during a celebration where we handed out more than 100 certificates. In this picture, we see Marilia. And she started as a gardener when she was 20. And today she is a coordinator responsible for one of the most romantic historical gardens in Lisbon at the Jardim da Estrela. She has visited the process back in 2009 and offered her portfolio to the Center for Public Consultation. This public consultation was key because in 2015, she came back to us. She came back because she had been accepted. She, she has accepted the challenge to be part of the object of a PhD, of a PhD thesis by a Brazilian researcher on lifelong learning. Marilia is in this picture on your left. Here we have Gracinda. She started the process back in December 2010 and finished in October 2011. Her breakthrough with a career change came two years later in December 2013. This is a, a, a short transcript of an interview we held in 2017. Gracinda said, the process led me to want to learn more. When I finished the process, I didn't sit around thinking I already know everything. No, quite the contrary. It led me to whenever there is a training in an area I'm interested in, I try to do it. Actually, I have just completed a training action. I'm constantly learning. It was one of the things the process gave me, the, the opportunity to remind me of how much I like to learn. I was able to change my career, 
until last December 2013, I worked as a garbage remover and then applied for the career of technical assistant. It was a long procedure, but at this moment I'm working in an office doing administrative work and applying other skills. And since then she hasn't stopped. She is right now working as a speaker at the City Workers Union. She also said in that interview, she underlined one of the benefits of the validation of prior learning, namely the growing awareness for the importance of training and searching development opportunities. Gracinda has empowered not only herself, she has also empowered other people that work with her, and even her adult son has restarted his education. Some participants applied to university. Luis attended the process back in 2009. He had been working as a topographer since the 90s at the city. He applied to the Univers Universidad Lusófona, where he has successfully finished his master's in architecture. We interviewed him back in February 2015. At that time, Luis was finishing his first university degree, his bachelor. He has also taken upon a private project of learning to surf. And last, we have Tanya. Tanya works as a public space inspector for the parish of Santa Maria Maior in the Baixa, the heart of Lisbon. She visited the process during 2016. She was invited by the National Agency for an inspirational trailer. This is, that is where I got this picture from. In fact, she has inspired several colleagues as well as parishioners to apply to our program. Tanya applied to Universidad Aberta, where she started a degree in social sciences back in October 2017, and which she has finished during the pandemic. And these, all these voices are the voices we need to share. As said in the beginning of this presentation, the validation of prior learning is about overcoming a lifelong hurdle. And at the same time, it is about planting the seed for future endeavors and implementing lifelong learning policies that are open to everyone. We strive for Lisbon to become a city where education is effectively permanent, transformative, and hopefully opportunity creating. Thank you. Merci. Obrigado for your time. I would be more than happy to answer any questions that you might have.